Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Welcome. This is the 48th weekly Torah portion called Shoftim in the Hebraist, in the Hebrew, and Farajoch Bamarinya. Let us begin by opening our Metaf, the Metaf Kedus, and reading this week's Torah portion, understanding the first verse, beginning at Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Listen, my abo, where will the women fess a kadus? Ahadu, I'm like her. I'm like her, eggs the abbe, her abbe, me set to her, the agar her, de johulu, bay a negadoche her, ferajochin, na, le cochin, na shum, le his bumak, and na further ye for a do. Let us begin by understanding this particular portion word by word. Amlakah, your male source or God. Igziabher, the sustainer, Yahweh. Bemi setih, in that which he gives you, male. The agarih, in your country, dej, gates. Hulu, all. Beyanegadochih, by tribe by tribe, according to each of your tribes. Farajochinna judges and alekochin and offices. Shum elect or appoint. Lehizbum and for the people in right or upright. Ferd judgment. Yifredu. Let them judge. This particular portion, this uh, Shabbat portion, as we know, is called Farajoch Bamarinya, in the Metzhaf Kedus of Negusa Negest, in the Book of the Seven Seals, or the Revised and Hard Bible of the King of Kings. The conquering line of the tribe of Judah, His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. In the Hebrew, this is known as Shoftim, and it's the Hebrew for judges. It's the first word in the Parsha, and the 48th weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebraic cycle of Torah, or Orit reading, and the fifth in the book of Deuteronomy. It constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 18, to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 9. And Hebrews in the Diaspora, generally read it in August or in September. The parasha, or the portion that we call Bamarinya, the minbab, or the nibab, or reading, it constitutes and it provides a constitution, a basic societal structure for the Beta Israel. This minbab, or nibab, it sets out rules for magistrates, for kings, for Levites, for prophets, cities of refuge, witnesses, war, and an unaccounted for corpse. Let's begin by understanding exactly what is contained the contents of this Sabbath or sabbatical portion in summary. Firstly, there are rules for magistrates. There are rules for judges. Musa, he directed the Beit Israel to appoint magistrates and officials, or for their tribes, to govern the people with justice, impartiality, and mainly without bribes or gubo, according to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 18 to 19. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 20, justice, justice shall you pursue. Certain abhorrent practices, Moses also warned the Israelites against setting up sacred posts besides or sacred groves or altars beside God's altar or erecting a stone pillar in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 21 to 22. Moses also warned the Israelites, the Beit Israel, against sacrificing an ox or sheep with any serious defect or blemish in Deuteronomy chapter 
17, verse 1. If the Beit Israel found a person who worshipped other gods, such as the sun, the moon, or any celestial body, then they were to make a thorough inquiry. And if they established the fact on the testimony of two or more witnesses, then they were to stone the person to death with the witnesses throwing the first stones, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 2 to 7. If a case proved to be too difficult, too baffling, or indecisive for them to render a true, just, and a firm decision, then they were promptly to go to the place which Hashem would choose for Hashem's shrine or holy place, to appear there before the priests, or the magistrates, the judges in charge, and present their problem, to present their case, and carry out any verdict that was announced there without deviating either to the right or to the left, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 8 to 11. They were to execute any man who presumptuously disregarded the priest or the magistrate so that all the people would hear and be afraid, and not act presumptuously, again, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 12 to verse 13. Also, in this portion, there were rules for kings. If, after the Beit Israel had settled and established themselves in the land, they decided to set a king, a Negus, over them, they were to be free to do so taking a Beta Israel who was chosen by God, a Siyuma Egezi Aviher, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 to 15. The king was not to keep many horses, nor to marry many wives, or to amass silver and gold to excess, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 16 to 17. The king was to have the priests, write for him a copy of this teaching to remain with him and to be read all his life so that he might learn to revere Hashem and to observe these laws faithfully according to Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 18 to 19. He would thus not act haughtily toward his people nor deviate from the law and as a consequence, he and his descendants would enjoy a long reign, according to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 20. There were also rules for Levites. Rules for Levites were also set in this particular Torah portion and reading that's known as Ferajoch in the Amurk, as well as Shoftim in the Hebrew. The Levites, the Lewawiyan, were to have no territorial portion, but were to live only off of the offerings for Hashem, was to be their portion, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 1 to 2. In exchange for their service to the true God, the priests were to receive the shoulder, the cheeks, and the stomach of sacrifices, the first fruits of the Beta Israel grain, wine, and oil, and the first sharings of the sheep, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 3 to 5. The Lewawiyan, the Levites, were to be free to come from their settlements to the place that Hashem had chosen as a shrine or a Mekdes, a holy place, to serve in the name of Hashem, with their fellow Lewawiyan, and there they were to receive equal shares of the dues, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 6 to 8. There were also rules for prophets set out in this particular Torah portion, known as Ferajoch Bamarinya and Shoftim Ba'ibrayist. The Beit Israel were not to imitate the abhorrent and the abominable practices of the nations that they were displacing, 
to consign their children to the fire or act as an auger in auguries or inaugurations or soothsayers or diviners or sorcerers or psychics or ones who cast spells, one who consults with ghosts or familiar spirits, or one who inquires so-called of the dead. For it was because of those abhorrent acts and abominable practices that Hashem was dispossessing the former residents of that land according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Ha'elohim Baruch Hu would raise a prophet, a Nabi, from among them likened unto Musa, and the Beta Israel were to heed, were to hear and to listen, to hear and to obey him, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. When at Koreb or Horeb, the Beta Israel asks Hashem not to hear Hashem's voice directly. Hashem created the role of the Nabi, of the prophet, to speak Ha Elohim's words, promising to hold to account anybody who failed to heed the Nabi's, the prophet's words, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 16 to 19. But any prophet, any Nabi, who presumed to speak an oracle, a word, in Ha Elohim's name that Elohim had not commanded the prophet to utter, or who spoke in the name of other so-called gods, was to die, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. This was how the people were to determine whether the oracle was spoken by Hashem or not. If the Nabi, if the prophet spoke in the name of God and the oracle did not come true, then the oracle was not spoken by Eloheinu, by our God. The Nabi had uttered it presumptuously, and the people were not to fear or to reverence him, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. In this particular parsha, or kufale, or kufal portion, this Torah portion known as Sarajoch Shoftim, there was also set out cities of refuge. The cities of refuge, when the Beta Israel had settled themselves in the land, they were commanded and they were instructed to divide the land into three parts and to set aside three cities of refuge so that any manslayer, could have a place to which to flee, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 1 to 3. And if the Beta Israel faithfully observed all the law, and Ha Elohim enlarged the territory, then they were to add three more towns to those three, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 8 to 9. Only a manslayer or a murderer or one who took another, another man's life, who had killed another one unwittingly, without being the other's enemy previously, might flee there and live, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 4. For instance, if a man went with his neighbor into a grove to cut wood, and as he swung an axe to cut down a tree, the axe head flew off the handle and struck and killed his neighbor then the man could flee to one of the cities of refuge and live, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 5. If, however, on the other hand, one who was the enemy of another lay in wait privily, struck the other a fatal blow, and then fled to a city of refuge, the Shema Galewoch, the elders of the slayer's town, were to have the slayer turned over to the blood avenger to be put to death, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 11 to verse 13. Now, in moving forward, there are other matters that is also discussed in this particular parsha or this particular portion, known as Shoftim in the Hebrew and known as Farajoch in the Amharic or Judges. And this we will take up as we continue in the next part of this. Shalom, Rastafari.